Hi everybody. That was um, just to show everybody where I stand on this current situation. You know, my late father was a United States Army drill sergeant during World War II. And uh, he pretty much drilled it into my head about this kind of stuff. So um, I think it's really important to state where somebody stands. And so I'm doing that. Maybe I should do a video on the things that my late father told me. But that might be for another time or a new channel. Who knows? Anyway, today, today we're going to talk about some Lumix lenses. So uh, when you buy a Lumix camera, Micro Four Thirds Lumix camera, other than the top of the line, the G9, the GH series, uh, at least here in the United States, you get the Lumix 12 to 60 millimeter zoom, and that's with the G85, G95, uh, GX9. And it's a fine lens, actually. It's sharp, it's contrasty, it's weather and splash resistant. Um, I had the Leica 12 to 60, and really I did not see a whole lot of difference image quality wise between this lens and the Leica lens. The Leica lens got better build quality. The Leica lens is faster at uh, stop faster at the long end, less than a stop faster at the short end, um, which actually for me professionally was uh, not what I wanted. So I ended up with the 12 to 35 constant f 2.8. But for really everyday casual use, I find the 12 to 60 to be great. But back when I uh, started with Lumix, the Lumix system, I had uh, GX85 cameras. And uh, that came with a 12 to 32 millimeter zoom. And I added the Lumix 45 to 150 um, to extend that range. But then eventually, uh, for travel, I decided to get the original Mark I 14 to 140. And that's the 3.5 of 3.5 to 5.6. There was an original version of the 14 to 140 that actually went to f5.8 at the long end. Different lens, different design. And um, when I was using that lens, I was cognizant of the fact that uh, it needed to be stopped down about a stop. Uh, at least at wider angles to sharpen the corners up. And it wasn't an issue for me. So as long as I was paying attention to that, yeah, I was, I was fine with it. But I ended up selling it when I bought a G85 because the 12 to 60 millimeter lens was weather and splash resistant. And I found it, and it's also a bit lighter. And so I decided to sell that copy of the 14 to 140. Recently, I was in a situation where I realized it might not be a bad idea to have that extended range. Um, it was a really bad conditions on the lakefront here, and I didn't want to change uh, lenses and open up the camera to the elements because there was sand blowing in off the beach, and it could have been pretty bad. So um, I went ahead and ordered the Mark II of the 140, which is weather and splash resistant. But I always test lenses. And so I went out with this lens and also the 45 to 150 and the 12, the 12 to 60. and shot some images, uh, which I'll show, kind of showing the difference in uh, field of view at the widest angles and at the longest uh, focal length for the 45 to 150. But then I also did a sharpness test in a local park of trees, and I find that tree, fine tree branches are a great test. So uh, I'm going to show that now and uh, have a look, and then I will follow up with my thoughts uh, after the slideshow. So let's take a look at these lenses uh, as far as field of view is concerned. This is the 12 to 60 at uh, the 12 millimeters. And next we have the 14 to 140 at 14 millimeters. And here is the 12 to 60 at 60 millimeters and the 14 to 140 at 140 millimeters. And of course, uh, there's a huge difference there. And now for the 45 to 150 here at 45 millimeters. And next at 150 millimeters, and you can see really, if you scroll back, there's not a lot of difference between uh, the 140 and the 150 um, in terms of field of view. Now I'm going to compare sharpness between the uh, 
14 to 140 and the 12 to 60 uh, at white angle. Um, and this is a scene in a local park near me. And, and I shot both uh, lenses at 14 millimeters uh, wide open and then at f5.6. Here is the top left corner of the 12 to 60 at 14 millimeters and f3.6, which is as wide as it goes at that focal length. And um, it's it's not bad, but here it is here it is at f5.6, and uh, it sharpens up um, quite a bit. Um, and a lot of that is due to also reduced chromatic aberration that the um, automatic correction uh, misses. Here is the uh, 14 to 140 at 14 millimeters and f3.5, and uh, you'll notice it is visibly softer than the uh, corresponding image from the 12 to 60. Also, there's more chromatic aberration. Stopping down to f5.6 does sharpen it a bit, but it is still not as sharp as the 12 to 60. Now for center crops, I'm just going to show these lenses wide open at uh, wide angle because once you stop either one of them down, they're, they're very sharp. So here is a 12 to 60 um, at uh, 14 millimeters and f3.6. And here is the 14 to 140 at 14 millimeters and f3.5 uh, center. And uh, they're, they're pretty close. I would say that the... 12 to 60 is a tiny bit sharper and maybe has better contrast, but um, the contrast is something you can probably even up in post. So um, in the center, neither of these uh, lenses has any issues wide, and really once you zoom them, uh, you're not going to see any, any real problems in the center at, wide, at, uh, at any focal length. So you can see, first of all, at the wider angle, at, at, at 14 and 12 millimeters um, of the 12 to 60 and the 14 to 140, you know, if you're out in nature, you can always take a few steps back to compensate for the 14 millimeters uh, not being as wide as the 12. Usually, unless you're on a cliff, don't do that. <laughs> Stepping back is a bad idea. You know, if you're in a more enclosed area like a city, it might be a little bit of a problem not, not having as wide an angle, so that's something to consider. Um, the, the 140 millimeters and 150 millimeters on the 45 to 150, not a lot of difference there as far as field of view. I don't think it's noticeable. Um, Sharpness-wise, about the same. Not, not really that different. But when you look at the wide angles, the 14 to 140 is softer and has more chromatic aberration than the 12 to 60. Now, one of the things I did on those is um, I uh, set the 12 to 60 to 14 millimeters, um, and you can do that pretty easily, even though it's not marked. You just use aperture, watch the aperture set wide open, and start zooming the lens. And when it goes from 3.5 to 3.6, uh, you're right at about 14 millimeters. So. That's how I even those things up. Um, chromatic aberration, less of a problem for the 12 to 60, even though it's there. And by the way, and I mentioned this in a previous video, if you're shooting raw, uh, you cannot completely rely on Lightroom's lens corrections. And if you look at the lens corrections, it'll say the built-in profile has been applied and there will still be chromatic aberration in the photo that you have to uh, fix. So, uh, but, on the 12 to 60, it's less of an issue than on the 14 to 140. So it kind of came to decision time of what do I do because what originally I thought I might do was sell the 12 to 60 and the 14 or the and, and the 45 to 150. And after seeing that, I have decided that um, it's probably better to stick with the 12 to 60, the two lens solution because you don't have to worry as much about shooting wide open. Because really, um, the 12 to 60, even wide open, uh, I think it's usable. Whereas the corners on the 14 to 140 uh, just are kind of soft and you gotta fix that chromatic aberration. So that's, that's my feeling. You may feel differently. Also, important thing to bear in mind, it's not a completely scientific test. First of all, sample size. You know, when you're, uh, I took what was called quantitative biology in uh, graduate school. It's essentially a statistics course. And obviously we're testing one sample of each of these uh, lenses. So that is a flaw. 
uh, Lens Rentals, lensrentals.com, their blog, they test lenses, but of course they're a rental house and they can test multiple copies. So that's kind of more valid. So it's possible that a really good copy of the 14 to 140 will outperform a eh, copy of the 12 to 60. Perfectly, perfectly possible. What do I think people should do? Well, I think if the things that I am concerned with aren't that important to you, um, by all means, 14 to 140 is fine. You can always just stop it down uh, if you need something uh, sharp across a frame. One of the times that you do that is if you're going to do stitched panoramas, you're going to want to have it as sharp as possible across the frame so that you don't get little soft areas in your stitch. Um, if you have a little bit more money to spend after you get your camera that has 12 to 60, the 45 to 150 is a deal. I mean, these are, th these are I don't know, they're not even $150. If you got money burning a hole in your pocket, if you want to spend about 100 bucks more than this costs, because this is a little under 500, hey, there is the 100 to 300. So if you have the 12 to 60 and the 100 to 300, you've got 24 to 600 full frame equivalent field of view. And um, you're spending way less money than you would if you were buying full frame uh, lenses to cover that range. And a great travel kit with either uh, the 12 to 60 with either of the two uh, zooms is to throw in the 20 millimeter uh, pancake uh, lens because it's fast. doesn't focus all that fast. I might talk about why that is in another video. So you always click that bell to know when I got a video coming up. Um, but that's a perfect three lens travel kit because you got that prime just to use for times when you are in low light. Um, so anyway, hopefully this was helpful and informative to you. If it was, please hit the like button. Again, click the bell to know when I'm putting up a new video. And if you've subscribed to this channel, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's a big help. I'm Todd Banner, and I will see you next time.